Hello. Today I will be talking about naming covalent compounds. And covalent compounds, let's write that down. Covalent compounds are the same thing as molecules. So when we hear covalent compounds, what we're talking about is molecules. And molecules are made of non-metals. And you wonder, which are the non-metals? Well, let's make a line over here. And let's distinguish the metals from the non-metals. Everything to my right of the red line will be the non-metals, either metalloid or gases. So everything to the right line, to the right of the red line, is a non-metal. Everything to the left of the red line is called a metal. And when we name molecules, we name them with non-metals. And we have to use prefixes. For example, we use the prefix mono, that means one. We use the prefix di, that means two. The prefix tri, three. The tetra would be four. Penta would be five, hepta, six, so hexa, sorry, six. So let's erase this a minute over here. And hexa is six, my apologies to you. Hexa is six, hepta, seven, Octa, eight. Nona is nine. And Deca is 10. Those are prefixes that we'll be using when we name molecules. So let's name some commonly known molecules. Let's take this away. And molecules, of course, is covalent compounds. Let's name some of those covalent compounds. And Let's begin with something that is commonly known. Let's name H2O, H2O, okay? These are non-metals, these are two gases, hydrogen and oxygen, let's name this. This is what I do first, make a line, and I make, I write the name of this first element, which is hydrogen. I make another line, and then write the name of the second element. And when naming compounds, the name of the second element, the ending changes to ide, so it becomes oxide. Now I go and look, how many of each do I have? I have two hydrogens, so I'm gonna name that dihydrogen, and I have one, understood it's not written, one oxygen, so I name that mono. Therefore, the compound for H2O is called dihydrogen monoxide. Okay, so dihydrogen monoxide is the name of the water molecule. Monoxide, only one O is needed. Okay, so let's erase that O there. Dihydrogen monoxide is the compound of water. Let's name another common compound. Let's name CO2, which we need for breathing, for life itself. Let's name the compound CO2. And again, make a line for the name. In this case, it's carbon, which is the non-metal and a line and oxide. 
notice that when the element is only one at the beginning, if the first element is only one, the word mono is not used. So this compound is simply called carbon dioxide, CO2. I repeat, if the first element is one, like in the case over here, one, we don't say the word mono to describe the first element. It is simply understood, carbon monoxide in this case. Let's name another one. Let's name the compound. Let's go with uh, nitrogen and fluorine. Let's call this compound in 3 F5. Okay, so I make a line and I call this nitrogen. Make another line and I call that fluoride because the name changes to ide. So this compound is something nitrogen, something fluoride. Let's see. So it's three and so I call that tri and it's five fluorine. So I call that according to my list, penta. So the compound N3F5 is named trinitrogen, one word, pentafluoride, okay? Because I have three nitrogens and I have five fluorines and becomes fluoride. This is covalent compound naming. These are non-metal namings. These are molecules, okay? This naming does not, do not include metals. Metals is anything to the left of the right line. So, to wrap things up, covalent compound naming is naming of non-metals. We call those molecules, and they're very specific. One changing in the number of the atoms, then the whole thing changes. Um, we call this also covalent compounds. They're very specific. For example, CO2 does not behave the same way as CO. CO2, as we know, is carbon dioxide, and CO, as we know, is carbon monoxide, very poisonous to our system. So molecules are very specific. This is covalent compound naming, molecules, non-metals. I hope this helps you out.